This is the castle Hoch Osterwitz. Hoch Osterwitz, what a difficult to pronounce name. Um, yeah, hi, hello and welcome. Microbe Hunter here. Why am I showing you a castle today? Well, because I'm going to, or I have rather, collected several microorganisms uh, right at this castle and I'm going to put them under the microscope. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a little bit of a different video where I both show you um, uh, some small, tiny little creatures here and also a little short uh, tour um, of uh, the beautiful castle. Now, the castle is located uh, in the federal state um, of Carinthia in Austria in Central Europe and I visited the place uh, a few days ago and, and of course uh, as always uh, I cannot go there uh, without uh, also taking along um, a couple of uh, samples. Now the castle itself um, was uh, constructed back in the 1500s so it's a medieval castle, it's a fortress and there are many uh, yeah, pretty uh, fortified gates there with uh, trap doors and all of these things here. Uh, everything that you need for a castle and uh, I like old buildings uh, of course uh, but I also like uh, microorganisms so I was kind of wondering what in the world uh, should I put under the microscope uh, there and indeed I did find uh, yeah um, a sample there that I took uh, along and uh, then at home um, I put it under the microscope now what we see here these are so-called rotifers I mean um, yeah um, of course uh, they are very ubiquitous you can easily find them but I also found a couple of ciliates uh, a couple of, of worms a nematode worm and so on and a couple of, of uh, very strange looking creatures um, as well. Well, this is uh, basically um, at the top um, of the castle. I had uh, to walk up there for about uh, 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, very beautiful view and uh, uh, yeah, the big and the very small. That's basically what this video is about because not only are we um, able to look um, at those old big, uh, yeah, uh, walls but also at the very tiny things. And here I'm going to pause the video uh, because this is actually a, something quite an interesting thing here. Let me back uh, go back again. This here, what you see over here, this is a, you won't believe it, a toilet, uh, a medieval toilet. Um, so basically when people were going to the toilet, um, all of the waste was, was falling down and uh, I'm going to turn on the arrow now here. Yeah, and all of the waste, uh, here is the arrow. Um, yeah, kind of fell down all the way down there and, and collected uh, um, on the bottom. So the hygienic conditions at that time, I mean, must have been absolutely uh, disastrous here. Okay. Can you imagine the bad smell and all of the diseases and everything fell down there? And that's basically where the waste of the toilet uh, collected. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, it looks very nice, the castle now <laughs> here. But um, a couple of hundred years ago, this must have been a very, mm, yeah, not such a nice place. I can imagine muddy, maybe wet. Uh, yeah diseases, um, yeah, because I mean med medieval times. This year, by the way, that's a flatworm, um, which I also found there. Yeah. So basically I went there and I collected um, a, a sample and when you go out and when you collect samples then you always have to be aware, okay, where um, is there plenty of life and usually life can be found there where there is water. And if you just look around uh, the area here, as beautiful as it looks like, it's fairly dry. Um, and uh, all of those uh, water microorganisms that I showed you, I did not find in a water sample. Um, as a matter of fact, because it, the castle is so high up, um, yeah, it's difficult. Uh, to get water there so that's why the people at that time had to dr drill very deeply into the well um, but rather I found uh, another place because there was actually water coming out um, from uh, the side um, of, uh, um, of a rocky wall which I'm going to show you. Well the Castle Hoch Osterwitz um, is a fortress um, as you can see and uh, this means that um, yeah um, it's uh, constructed in a very uh, solid and defensive way um, but uh, again uh, one of the things that was a real problem problem at that in the medieval times were probably not only the enemies uh, that could take over the forest but also the dise diseases and uh, of course uh, yeah especially when you're kind of isolated um, in a place and when hygienic conditions are not so good this is then of course also a place where people got ill and here again I'm going to pause the video because what you see here right now in the center these are bacteria yeah so and of course uh, these are bacteria here they found something to hatch onto and to decompose and that's why they start to reproduce yeah i like uh, all the doors as well but as i was looking around uh, yeah i was of course wondering where could i collect a sample everything was very dry uh, yeah also over here yeah old military equipment from the middle uh, ages that there was a museum up there um, as well of course you're not allowed to touch anything so where in the world am i supposed to collect my my samples from so i was a little bit um, worried already that <laughs> was uh, um, basically 
not able to do a video. And uh, yes, of course, I did find samples. That's why I'm showing you all of those videos here in between. And this is actually one of those ciliates, which for whatever reason started to, to lie. Slice means basically it started to die and pop open and all of the cells contents are spilled out. I don't know why it did that. Um, it cannot be because of the pressure of the cover glass, uh, because actually there were some sand grains also where there that kind of uh, protected it a little bit. So kind of to keep the cover glass uh, away, but for whatever reason, it started to, to lice and to split. Um, yeah. But uh, then on the way down, I was wondering, okay, where am I going to take a sample? And look at here, of course, look on the side here on the rocky wall, plenty um, of moss and plants, uh, other plants growing there as well. And this is basically where I immediately said, okay, great. That is a place for tardigrades and uh, moss piglets. Where there is moss, you usually find moss pig piglets. I have to tell you right now, I did not find any moss piglets there, but um, other interesting, um, yeah, uh, microscopic life here. Yeah, depending on the uh, location, and the moisture, um, different uh, kinds of moss were growing there. Um, moss has a fairly large surface area, so that means there is plenty of uh, space for microorganisms uh, to, to live there. Right, and uh, this one, for example, here you can see this uh, oval, dark round structure inside of the cell, and it looks almost a little bit like an algae, or maybe even um, yeah, conidium. A conidia are the spores of a fungus, and uh, so evidently it has eaten something there, and that's uh, yeah. So basically, on the way down, I picked uh, some of the moss. Uh, the moss was moist. That's important um, because, of course, where there is water, there is life, as already as I said before. And the reason why it was moist is, is because upon closer inspection, I could actually see that there was actually some water coming out from the side of the rock, um, which uh, surprised me a little bit because, uh, um, yeah, there shouldn't be so much water there because it has been quite dry over the last couple of days. This one, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> um, but um, apparently the, the rock was able to maintain um, uh, some, uh, some water from uh, several days ago when it still started to rain. And as it seeped through the rock and, and the soil, and it started to come out. And that's why there are so many microorganisms now um, also there. Back at home. So um, in order to um, extract whatever is in the moss, um, you uh, simply added a little bit of tap water and uh, tapped uh, the moss uh, on a Petri dish. And you can see that there was this uh, sediment um, coming out. And that is the place uh, where you can also find, of course, uh, microorganisms. Um, and I uh, found a diatom even. Can you believe that? A diatom, which are water organisms. But um, evidently, the moss was moist enough um, even uh, to, uh, to harbor uh, those. Plenty of ciliates I found. And all of those dark spots that you see, these are probably some sand grains, some, some debris material. Yeah, And I also found uh, a little, little amoeba dragging along uh, yeah, a huge, I don't know what that is, some other debris you know, which got stuck uh, to the cell. Um, yeah, And then yeah, it was able to let go of it. This, by the way, it's a time lapse. Yeah? Um, so you see that the biodiversity in the moss is, is, is quite high. Um, and uh, therefore, even at the most unusual places, you're able <laughs> to find uh, to find some interesting specimens uh, to observe. And th that's why I decided to kind of show you a little bit some of the things that I found here. And uh, that's one of the nice things about hobby microscopy is, is that uh, yeah, you can essentially do it all the time. Uh, you don't yeah, basically need any fancy um, equipment. A simple microscope is enough. And then when you go out and when you collect samples, then you're able to find um, all of those uh, little things here um, yeah, under um, a small sample of moss. Well, I'm going to now do the following. I would like to now use this opportunity to, of course, thank all of my supporters. Um, I've got several, uh, many patron supporters as well. A big thank you to those um, yeah, who are supporting me. Um, I would also like uh, to, yeah, yeah, invite you to subscribe to the channel. That's also a way of supporting it. And I uh, wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. And uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.